Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be doing a restoration on this beautiful one horsepower motor which was made by Master Electric. That company was located in Dayton, Ohio and they were founded around 1920 and in 1958 they merged with uh, Reliance and uh, this company is noted for making some extremely high quality motors. Uh, this motor here weighs between 70 and 75 pounds. That seems to be very well built. It's also very attractively built. It has a nice open uh, waffle weave design on the back of it. It's just really a beautiful motor. Um, you can see from looking at the side there that the uh, wiring is completely shot on this thing. So I haven't even been able to uh, test this thing because uh, we need to put some new wires on there. I have a copy here of the 1925-26 Master Catalog. Uh, this is an original catalog. It's not a reproduction. And in this catalog, a one horsepower motor with this frame cost about $60 and today that translates to about $972 so it was pretty expensive for the time. Uh, this motor is rated to run on 110 volts or you could also run it on 220. So um, I'm looking forward to taking this thing apart and getting it running again. We're hopefully you're going to enjoy following along. All right, so with the uh, rear end bell removed, uh, we can see the uh, brush holder assembly here, and we can see right off the bat that that's corroded and that's gonna have to be addressed. Also, right down here is the little tab that you use to rotate the uh, brush holder assembly to change the direction on the motor. Um, one thing you could see is inside of here, it looks like this thing is filled up with a lot of dirt and gravel that's inside of here. Almost reminds me of the uh, General Electric motor I did not too long ago. In the uh, at rear end bell housing, you can see that there is an opening here on the bottom, and that's for you to be able to access uh, this little tab right here. So uh, we'll go ahead and continue taking this thing apart and uh, see what kind of condition that rotor is in. All right, so just taking a quick look inside the uh, stator here, you could really see the uh, quality of the construction of this motor when they built it. Um, not only are the uh, windings well insulated, but they also put these uh, protective pieces around here to keep the windings from uh, getting banged up. They really did a nice job on it. Uh, unfortunately, down here you could see where this thing is completely packed with uh, gravel, sand, dirt, that kind of stuff so we're gonna really need to take our time and do a, a thorough job of cleaning that out of there because that could definitely hurt those windings and this side as you can see appears to be more than the same of course you always got a couple uh, friends living inside there uh, one thing that we can see here on this uh, wiring harness area here is that it looks like somebody tried to put some kind of I don't know if that's gasket material or what that is in there but uh, we're going to have to remove all of that out of there and uh, get these wires replaced, of course. And I could see that a couple uh, leads are split open over here. So um, we're going to have to make sure that we check those with the mager and uh, get all that uh, squared away so that there's no short circuits or anything like that in there. Moving over here to the rotor. This is a big fan on this uh, rotor. The fan is actually bigger than the opening of the stator, so you could only pull the rotor out 
in one direction. So uh, I'm sure that does a nice job of keeping this uh, motor running cool. And the uh, rotor looks to be really well constructed. The uh, commutator appears to be in good condition. Of course, later on in the project, we'll be pulling this uh, guard cover off here. And underneath there, there'll be the, uh, the spring that controls the uh, short circuit mechanism. So we'll take that apart a little bit later. Then here's the uh, front end bell. And here you can see it's got that sand and gravel in there like the others. And here's the uh, brush housing assembly. There we got our carbon brushes. So we'll go ahead and uh, the first step is gonna be to start cleaning up these stator windings. So I'm gonna spend some time now uh, cleaning out these windings thoroughly. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is vacuum up uh, all of the loose stuff out of here and get in there with a brush and uh, clean everything out until these things are spotless. So that could easily take a couple hours. So I'll bring you guys back when I got these things uh, thoroughly cleaned up so that you don't have to sit and wash that part. Okay, so I'm in the middle of cleaning up these windings. And what I'm realizing is that this uh, protective covering that they put over these uh, windings is just uh, dry rotted and it's flaking off. So I'm going ahead and I'm cutting this twine which secures it in place. And I'm going to try to remove as much of that as possible so that I can do a better job of insulating uh, the windings once we get everything cleaned up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try to remove that, uh, re-insulate the windings, and then uh, I could use some... Uh, friction tape when we're done just to kind of resecure those in place. So we'll carry on and bring you guys back in a little bit. Okay, so I spent about four hours on these windings. Uh, it was really a tedious and delicate job to uh, get into all the nooks and crannies with a uh, pair of tweezers and gently remove all the uh, old material that was in there. And uh, the job was not without its problems. When we spin the uh, stator around here, you can see that in some areas uh, we have quite a bit of insulation loss on these windings. So I really had to be careful while I was in there trying to uh, remove all that material. And the reason why some of that varnish is missing off those windings is because at some point somebody sprayed uh, something in there. It appeared to be some kind of a petroleum based product. As I was removing that material, I felt like an, they were kind of oily and everywhere that that oily substance was sitting on those windings for a prolonged period of time, it just uh, took the varnish off. So that's one reason why it's really important to be careful what you're spraying um, in an electric motor. You can't just go spraying brake cleaner in there and spraying oil in there. You really have to be careful because a lot of these older motors, you know, unless you know what the composition is of the varnish, uh, you need to use something that's gentle so that you don't inadvertently remove it when you spray something in there. And that's exactly what the problem is here. So now I've got these windings. Uh, <laughs> they're looking as good uh, or haven't looked this good since they left the factory. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the Megger and uh, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for a little bit of good luck. And hopefully uh, these areas aren't causing any serious problems with the Megger reading. And when we apply the uh, new varnish on there, we're gonna make sure that we give this a nice liberal coating and uh, repair all that damage that's on there. So let me get the Megger hooked up. All right, so these mega readings were good. Um, and once we get these uh, windings dried out um, and warmed up, I, they might even get a little stronger, but it's almost at infinity right now or close to it. So uh, the mega reading is good. So we got really lucky with that. And uh, we'll get these dried out thoroughly before we uh, put the varnish on there. So if you look in this area here and you look right over here, you'll notice that there's some raised surfaces on uh, these mating areas here. 
So uh, it's imperative that the mating surfaces of the end bells are perfectly smooth so that they fit together properly and doesn't push everything out of alignment. Otherwise, uh, not only could that cause premature wear on the bearings, but it could also cause them to heat up a little bit. So what we're gonna use to knock those down is, I have a set of uh, tool room stones right here. These are precision ground flat stones. So uh, these were ground actually on a surface grinder. And uh, we're gonna just take these and knock down those burrs. These tool room stones really work good for a lot of different things. And you can definitely feel that burr in there. Okay, so I'm beginning to apply the insulating varnish on the windings. And for this project, I'm using the brush on the Gliptol. And uh, the reason why I'm using the brush on instead of the spray is because I really want to put several liberal coats of this stuff on there and want it to fully saturate in the windings. And you can get a lot heavier coat with the brush on uh, variety. And since some of those windings were missing the insulation, this is the best way to go. So I've already got the first couple coats on here. And what I'm doing is, uh, prior to putting on the varnish, as I've mentioned in several of my other videos, I allowed these windings to warm up with the heating pad. You want to make sure that the windings are warm and dry before you put on the insulating varnish. That's very important. So uh, these, these windings were nice and toasty before I began here. So I'm putting on two coats, and then uh, once I get a couple coats on there, then we're going to make our repairs to these lead wires, reroute those, and then I'll put on a final coat at the end with everything in place. So uh, that's the way we're going to approach that. All right, I got the uh, space heater set up here, and I'm going to let that blow over those windings to get those dry all the way through. Um, because I put those coats on there really thick, I want to make sure that uh, that insulating varnish dries completely, and the uh, space heater will help get that accomplished. All right, so we got both bushings removed, and I got a couple new ones on order, and I also removed the oil wicking felt from the oil sums, and we will repack that with some fresh material once we put it back together. Okay, so now we're making the repairs on the uh, four lead wires coming out of here. So you can see here I got some heat shrink tubing on here. And this is a high quality uh, marine heat shrink. So uh, it actually has like an adhesive inside of there. It works real good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually join the uh, lead wires up inside of the stator here. And just have the cord coming out. As opposed to having all four of these lead wires coming out how they were before. That will give it a neater appearance uh, when it's finished. So uh, once we make these repairs then we'll cover up that heat shrink tubing with some uh, black friction tape. So it has more of an appearance how it did originally. All right, so uh, I found a power cord, which I just had in my collection of spare cords. And I'm covering up the cord with this product here, and it's called Tetflex. And it's a braided covering, and it just kind of slips over the cord. And uh, it just gives it kind of like that nice braided appearance when it's finished. It makes it look a little bit more um, vintage, so we're going to use that. All right, so I'll bring you guys in here so you can see where we're at. So we have the new uh, lead wires attached on there. And as you can see here, I got both pairs of the uh, windings just uh, temporarily using these uh, wire nuts here. So then when we're ready at the end, we'll just bring the uh, power cord in and attach it to these and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I gave the windings just a real light coat of this uh, high heat black paint. And I just did that just to kind of Changed the color back to how it was originally with the black so that the uh, they weren't that red color. And uh, that, that doesn't hurt that varnish at all. It was just a real light coat.
So here we could see the short circuiting mechanism and one thing that we can see right off the bat is that the spring is broken. So this motor would not have been running correctly um, had I had tried to test it, which I didn't because the uh, wiring on it didn't allow me to do that. Uh, you could also see that I took out all the little contacts so that I could do a better job of cleaning them as opposed to just throwing the whole thing in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. It's better to take them out and uh, make sure everything's clean there individually. Now as far as the spring is concerned, we're going to go ahead and make a new one. And the first thing that we need to do is uh, we need to get an accurate length of how long our new spring is going to be. And the way that we're going to get that length is we're going to count the number of coils that are on that spring. We'll figure out how many coils are in an inch and then uh, that'll tell us how long of a new spring we're going to need. Uh, you can't just measure the old spring because as you can see it's all stretched out. So uh, that's not going to be accurate. So the best way to do it is just count the coils and figure out how many coils are in an inch and you could arrive at the length that way. So that's going to be the next step. So I counted the coils of the spring by hand. There's approximately 52 coils for every inch of spring. And I counted a total of 337 coils, uh, which gives us a spring length of 6.48 inches. So right around six and a half. Now there was a tiny section of the spring missing so I'm going to go ahead and make the spring six and a half inches and uh, we can adjust it from there. So as you can see here, we got the six thirty seconds uh, bolt started. We're just going to go in maybe about four threads. I'll cut the head off that bolt and then we'll thread the other side. Alright, so before we reinstall this thing back in the rotor, uh, we're going to want to make sure that it works. So, I've got the uh, short circuiting mechanism set up in a little arbor here on this old Westinghouse motor. And when I flip the motor on, uh, we should see the uh, bars of the shorting necklace open up once it gets up to speed. like it's working perfectly now I'm gonna go ahead and secure that uh, joint with a little bit of Loctite so I've cleaned up the fan with a wire brush and removed all the rust off of there and uh, now what I've done is I've coated it up with this uh, rust converter that'll convert the rust to a black oxide which will be able to uh, paint it after that All right, so I went ahead and I painted the rotor windings the same color as the stator windings, which means I painted over that red varnish with the black spray paint. I also shot the housing and the two end bells with some black paint. I'm not gonna waste a lot of video on the painting. It's just a basic black paint job, just like it had originally. And now I'm gonna put the short circuiting necklace back onto the rotor, and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to uh, assemble this thing. So we got the uh, new bushings made up and before I reinstall those into the end bells I need to repack the inside of the end bells with some fresh wool yarn because uh, the old stuff was dry rotted. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that now.
So normally I like to uh, polish up these name plates a little bit, you know, give it a little bit of a nicer appearance. Um, but this one is made out of some kind of a really soft metal. I don't know if it's lead or some kind of a pop metal, but when I went to try to clean it, I started rubbing the letters off of there. That's how soft the metal was. So what I ended up doing was just cleaning it with some mineral spirits and I just hit it with a little bit of clear coat and I'm just gonna leave it be because uh, I don't wanna take a chance on ruining it. Okay, so we have the remaining hardware cleaned up and uh, we're just about ready to start putting this thing back together. Uh, a couple of these acorn nuts were pitted really heavily, but uh, I just decided that I was gonna go ahead and reuse them. They're the original ones and I like to reuse the original pieces whenever possible. I could have easily put some new ones on there but um, functionally, there's nothing wrong with those. So we just cleaned them up the best we could and put a little clear coat on them and we'll put them right back on to where they've been for the last 90 plus years. So anyways, we'll start putting this motor back together and uh, hopefully it's gonna run. So now this motor is finished and I couldn't be happier with the way that it turned out. Uh, this motor was not in running condition when we started due to that broken short circuiting spring, uh, but we fabricated a new one and that's working like a charm. So uh, these master motors were really well built and I'm real happy to have this in my collection. Hope you enjoyed following along with this video and we look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you very much for watching.